Okay, right. So um, thank you so much for inviting me. So I will just explain a little bit uh, why I do this research when I work with consumer culture normally. Well, I'm um, uh, associate professor in marketing at the Department of Business Administration at the School of Business uh, at the Boy University. So I work with sustainable consumption and sustainable production. Uh, and this, uh, the market is the interface, of course, between production and consumption, as everything that is produced needs to be consumed and vice versa. Um, I will. Uh, uh, talk to you here about a market perspective that we use in a project uh, which is called ecosystem based regional governance of the seas uh, and it's a three year project funded by Havo Vattenmyndigheten where we work with three pilots uh, which are Stockholm's archipelago, uh, the south uh, Bosnian sea the coast from um, north of Stockholm up to um, uh, north of Söderhamn. And also now we work with uh, um, an area called plus eight plus fjords in the southern part of Bohuslän. So in these pilots, uh, we uh, look at different uh, uh, activities. It could be economic activities or social activities that had an impact on the sea or use the sea in their uh, um, activity. So uh, this is the, the base from where I talk today uh, when uh, applying a market perspective. Right. So why do we um, apply a market perspective um, on the topic of ecosystem-based marine governance? Uh, well, um, in this project that we work with, uh, we, um, before starting, we uh, um, did a literature review and we saw that there was a perspective missing. A market perspective helps us understand how important marine governance challenges such as fishery, which would be exam the example here in my presentation, uh, how these um, challenges are shaped by market actors that act and react in a specific manner within a specific regulatory setting. And um, our literature re review on literature on ecosystem-based uh, marine governance showed very clearly that there is a dominance of economic perspectives, cultural perspectives, political perspectives, and legal perspectives. Uh, of course, there are natural science perspectives and a lot of research within the natural science, but we looked at the social science or the social and economic science. And we missed a market perspective that describe and show how market actors such as uh, uh, producers, consumers, suppliers, but also politicians as lawmakers, how, what they do, how they, uh, and how they act within a specific regulatory setting. And this, what market actors do, it is what we as social scientists called uh, how they act what practices they are engaged in. So practices are doings, what they do. Um, because in this project, we see very clearly that uh, the quota system in, in pelagic fishing, as an example, uh, configure or heavily shape uh, the entire fish supply chain. So what producers of fish do um, in terms of what kind of fish they process, uh, what kind of fish is being sold in, um, in, in uh, the supermarket, et cetera, is, 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 is um, 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 reflecting uh, ITQs, the ITQ system, but in a specific way, because when a uh, political regulatory system uh, is, is um, um, affecting the market, there are specific competitive situations and configurations 
uh, that we need to take into account. So something happens when regulations uh, are, are um, uh, meeting uh, the, the market. And this competition and the competitional, the, the outcomes in competi competitive settings in terms of what is being produced, what is being consumed, etc. This is what we are studying. So as you see here, I'm taking the example of fishery uh, because that's, it's really hard to speak in general about a market perspective of ecosystem-based marine governance. And also I don't have the knowledge about that, but we have been studying uh, the market for, for fish in detail in these three um, uh, pilots. Right, now this is a slide uh, that this is not my, my, my area of competence, but as, as, um, as we do research in this project, it's, um, uh, it's by uh, default uh, interdisciplinary. We work uh, together with um, natural scientists uh, in each of these three pilots. We work with Stockholm University, the Center for Baltic, <laughs> uh, via Wikström, uh, for Stockholm Aquilago. We have been working with Carolyn Faithful at SLU Aqua for this uh, Bosnian um, Sea pilot. And we are working with Peter Thur at SLU Aqua in Lysoshil for the 8 plus um, fjord pilot. Um, there is a doctoral student uh, working for me uh, with this, this interdisciplinary area. So, um, so we have recognized from our business uh, perspective that ecosystem-based fishery governance, and you might have um, uh, comments on this, of course, is uh, there is a focus on the ecosystem and multi-species level. Um, and you can have various, you can look at um, trophic cascades or food webs, um, that's what we have learned, but this is, so there's a focus not on one species, but on the multi-species and ecosystem level. And also there's a recognition, increased recognition of the interconnections between marine biodiversity and climate change. This is what we have learned as social scientists. So this means in practice that we move our focus as, as uh, business um, scholars from looking at, um, single species fishery more to have a holistic view right um so a market perspective on ecosystem marine governance and the example of fishery i will try to explain the difference between having a market perspective and other uh, well represented perspectives that we see in the literature there are a number of studies on the macro level, including the study of legal and regulatory frameworks. And ITQs is only one example here, so for, um, at, at a specific layer on these regulatory frameworks. Um, there are standards, MSC is one, which is very influential when it comes to the trade with fish. Um, we have, um, studies on cultural understanding of the marine uh, of the marine environment the cultural understanding of fishery uh, we have historical cultural uh, studies we have also um, uh, studies on trade on a macro level who is selling um, countries involved in trade uh, um, kilos of, of different species etc then I will go down to the to the base here on this slide and talk about the micro level. We also have quite a number of studies uh, which are found on the micro level, which means that we study individuals. It could be individual fishermen, it could be individual um, um, boats, <laughs> and those who are 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 um, or, or fishing vessels. It could be individual consu fish consumers' attitudes, etc. There are another, quite a few studies on fish consumption on the individual level or the level of the households where attitudes are mapped, uh, trying to understand um, 
why consumers buy or don't buy um, you know, um, um, MSC certified fish or whatever. We, the market perspective implies by default a level in between the macro and the micro, which I call the meso level, which is a, a common uh, um, um, description of the level in between. So this is where we, where we are in our project. So the, the market perspective at this meso level means that we study the outcomes uh, or, um, at the market level of specific uh, macro level structures and how they, how they play out in a competitive setting. So um, we look at structural, market structural and market cultural understandings of how regulation um, impact fishery, the fish industry and consumption of fish. Um, I will take an example uh, from, um, from, uh, from a consumption perspective. How come that um, unsustainable fished fish is being sold at the um, expense of more sustainably, uh, sustainable fished fish? Uh, if we have apply a market perspective, we look at what is what can you actually buy in the store. So if I go to my local cook, uh, I see there's one uh, krav labeled um, kind of fish available for sale in the in the uh, you know among if I go for frozen fish, um, there are a couple of MSC or quite a few actually, but now in the, when there's um, given the current level of inflation, um, to a greater extent, there is non-labeled fish at sale, and that is the sheep fish. So from a market perspective, it's not difficult to understand why consumers don't buy sustainable fish. And, and the, the, the concept of sustainable fish is very, very complicated here, but I rely more on then the let's say certified fish, um, right. Um, we, at the market perspective, we also look at competition between uh, sustainable standards for fish. There is MSC and, and other um, standards uh, compete with each other, even though they compete with each, uh, with each other uh, from the consumer viewpoint. Consumers normally don't have a clue when it comes to the difference between different sustainable certifications. Um, so um, these kind of um, competitive uh, structures and the outcomes of that for production and consumption is our topic. Right. So the market perspective do include not only how ITQs, like an example for pelagic fish, fishery, or uh, if you want the, the way uh, the demersal fishery is being regulated in Sweden, how they how that kind of regulative frameworks, how they the effects of that on fishing, on fishermen and their ability um, um, to sustain themselves. Uh, and then also how it plays out in the consumer setting. What actually is on sale for consumers and do consumers have a possibility to understand the sustainability of fishing? Now, um, a market perspective on, the, on ecosystem based fishery can be seen as a socio-ecological approach. So the concept of socio-ecologic system, which comes, um, which is um, um, in focus for the Stockholm Resilience Center, uh, is also a part of the work of doctoral student Ellen Gustafsson, which works within this project. Um, now, Ecosystem-based marine governance that include a number of different market actors, as I said, producers and consumers and suppliers and, and politicians and lawmakers, recognizes in the same way as, as within socio-ecological theory that there are 
uh, a great number and a variety of interactions between humans and human activity and specific species and ecosystems. Uh, so you could actually say that the market perspective aligns with the socio-ecological systems approach, where, where we see that there are what we call in business studies, assemblage of humans and non-human life forms in um, geographical settings. Now, fishery examples. Um, um, from a socio-ecological theoretical um, system approach and applying a marketing perspective, we can see that in fishery, clearly, uh, and that is, we are not uh, surprised by this, human and non-human life forms interact. Human life forms in politics, in retail, in fishery, in the fish industry, and in retail interact with fish and with the marine environment. So that is, you know, that's simple. Um, so, but what does that mean in practice? Well, we see very clearly when we have done this uh, research in our pilots, uh, and we recently um, sent in a report to Harvard Wattenmindigheten uh, mapping exactly where in pelagic fishery, where does the fish end up uh, in the end? And now we know that of course, uh, that there is the decrease in herring stocks in the Baltic Sea is intimately connected to the growth of the farmed salmon industry in Norway and the domination of farmed salmons as part of the Swedish diet. Well, this might not as, at all come as a surprise to you, but, um, in, in, uh, in um, um, it needs to be described very carefully in, in literature, exactly how these uh, elements um, configure each other. So by using a market perspective, we could anal anal analyze the interactions between political decisions and production consumption of fish. So um, what kind of research question can we address um, and um, in, um, by applying a market perspective on ecosystem-based governance on fish in specifically and ecosystem-based governance, of course, then in general? Well, for fish, uh, we can ask and address questions like, what is the role of competition, political institutions, and regulations in the development of fish stocks. Um, in what way um, do specific fish stocks configure markets, fish markets? And uh, I, um, in my vocabulary, configuration of, of market practice is a very common word, but uh, you can use enable or um, a word like that. So for instance, we can um, ask and, and try to answer how are regional fish stocks affected by ITQs and why? And this why question here is very, very important for us because this why question, um, I mean, regional fish stocks um, might not be, uh, and you know this better than, than me now, um, I don't think that ITQs are um, um, regional based <laughs> uh, in, in, uh, in uh, well, to some extent within the zones, fishing zones, of course, but, but um, um, in Stockholm Archipelago, there are, you know, various regional stocks of herring are being, being um, um, mapped. The why question depends on fishing vessels available, size of fishing vessels. Also, um, um, it depends on the, the structure on the fishing industry. Who will buy this fish from specific vessels? Where is the value adding capacity? Uh, um, um, where can, can we, we find it physically? Where is its situ situation? 
uh, what kind of vessels can land there, who is buying the processed uh, uh, fish, etc. So the why question is what we can help with or answer when applying a market perspective. What institutional, and ch institutional changes are needed to transform the market for fish and governance of the ocean? These are the quite kind of questions that we could contribute to other um, um, bodies of literature by looking into the comp competitive mechanisms that play out when we have a regulatory framework, given the, 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 the um, um, fish vessel fleet, given the market conditions, given the certification schemes, given the um, 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 size and, and the demand for um, feed, uh, made uh, made of herring, demanded by the Norwegian fishing industry. These are examples of the kind of questions that we can uh, um, ask and um, try to find answers for by applying a market perspectives. Um, before ending, I just wanted to add something also where I think that our, a market perspective can be it can be useful for for. Um, many topics within uh, marine governance, of course, uh, but um, also I think for um, aquaculture in Sweden. Um, I've, I've, um, I've come to understood that there is uh, um, aquaculture has, has more challenge, has a lot of challenges today. And as Swedish uh, market scholars working with fish, we can see that there is a clearly a link missing, and it is the retail link um, when it comes to Swedish farmed fish. So uh, we can address the why questions that it comes to the different market players in the market for uh, Swedish farmed fish as another example. I think I will end with this.